but words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to our hearts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see you. I'm so thankful that you are with us here today. It's a beautiful day outside in El Segundo. And uh, just glad that you could come and hey, join us for this worship time. Well, our mic's not on. All right, everybody, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us today. I'm so thankful that you're here. And it is a just a gorgeous day in El Segundo. And it's great to be with you um, and to, to have this time of worship. I think it's important for us to be together. And this morning is just a really important message from God's word. Can I, can I tell you a secret this morning? It's a secret. Uh, that I have been told by Paul. It's obviously in, in the Bible, but Paul tells us a secret that it actually has the power to radically change your contentment in this life. Paul says that he's learned the secret of being content in everything, in every situation. And so what would your life look like? What would your days look like if you just, regardless of the circumstances that are going on around you, you could have a deep sense of peace in your heart, in your, in your soul, a deep sense of satisfaction and contentment. I, I was talking with Fred, one of our shepherds this past week, and told him I was preaching on contentment, and he said, you know, John, with everything going on, in, in life right now with, with, with the pandemic and the challenges and uh, the talk, the rhetoric, it's just really hard for people to find contentment. And the good news this morning is that you can, you can. And so I want you to really listen, get your Bibles out, Philippians chapter four, and uh, Paul's gonna tell us how we can experience deep contentment. Well, as Dennis said earlier, you know, cases are rising, uh, all, at least uh, in Los Angeles area. The hospitals are filling up. The, the ICU units, uh, you know, are pretty much at maximum capacity. And I, I hear uh, every day now uh, on Facebook or through message of a friend or family member or someone at this church that has contracted this virus. And, and I think everybody, you, you, you probably know now someone because it's just so widespread. Uh, you guys know my dear friend, Andy Wall. It's his birthday today, and his, but his brother, Ben Wall, uh, has COVID and he's really struggling with it. And then uh, last night, I guess Ben's wife um, came down with COVID as well. And uh, Frances Calhoun is worshiping with us today, and she's online. And Frances, uh, we want you to know we're praying for you as you are battling this. Appreciate your sense of humor uh, as, you're, as you're struggling, but you're worshiping with us today. Welcome, Frances, and praying for your grandson who, who also has this. So, you know, um, contentment during COVID is a huge challenge. And it's not, I know it's not just COVID. I know people are worried about their jobs and people are worried about their income and relationships are struggling and we can't be with the people uh, that we love perhaps uh, during these seasons. So it's just really tough. So listen to what Paul has to say because Paul shares this secret of being content in every situation, whether it is health challenges, financial challenges, relationship challenges, Paul says, um, whether I am in need um, or I have plenty, I've learned the secret. So Paul, you know, just continues to make these outrageous claims. And so in his final comments, it doesn't surprise me uh, that he makes this just this other outrageous claim. But think about what he said. I mean, Paul has said in Philippians that to live is Christ, to die is gain. He says, to, you know, to live is, is about Jesus, but to die is, is even better. And of course, we have a lot of people and, and that, are, that are dying, and we have mortality, certainly, that is on our mind. Paul said uh, in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. 
Now, I get, you know, rejoice in the Lord. I get that. But Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Paul says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving in your heart. Thanksgiving, right? Uh, we've learned so much about a thankful heart. Having hearts that are full of thanksgiving is certainly a key piece, uh, part to the peace that we can have. Thankfulness. To, 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 it's a, I think it's part of the secret to contentment is having a, a heart that is full of of thanksgiving rather than always thinking about things that you don't have or the challenges that you're facing. And, and talking about thinking, we saw last week, Paul says, you know, try thinking for a change in your life. That what are the things that you're constantly filling your mind with? And then he concludes by giving us the secret. So here it is, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Paul says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. Now, have we heard that multiple times throughout this letter to this church in Philippi? To the Christians that are there? In the Lord. In the Lord is where we find that peace and that protection where God's going to guard our hearts and minds. In the Lord is where we find contentment. In the Lord is where we find thankfulness. It's in that relationship with God. So he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. He goes on to say, I, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, and then he shares the secret, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We've got some fire engines going by. Not, not sure if you heard the sirens, but I wanted to pause because I really want you to get verse 13 here. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So what does it mean to be content in all circumstances? It's this deep satisfaction, this deep peace in your heart that you can find inside through the power of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, it seems like people are never satisfied these days and, and they, they don't have contentment. There's a lot of discontentment, isn't there? And I think one of the reasons for that is that we live in a culture of more, right? More money, more things, you know, more relationships, and we want bigger and better things, and we believe that newer is nicer, and we are taught this. We are constantly fed this narrative that you've got to have more, you've got to have more, and if you're always wanting and needing more, then you're never going to feel the sense of contentment. Now, I was thinking about Starbucks, and I love Starbucks, but, you know, thinking just about how they, they named their uh, drinks, right? Uh, at least the size of their drinks, right? And so the smallest drink in Starbucks is called what? Tall, right? They, they don't want to call it small. Do you want a small cup? It's a tall cup. Because tall is better, you see. And then the, the next size is the grande. That's what I usually get, is the grande. And they've, they've using Spanish there. What does grande mean in Spanish for us Californians? We, we know grande means big, right? Because bigger is better. And then they have the venti size. And I'm not sure if that's another take off the word like 20 in Spanish. I couldn't uh, see what they were thinking when they came up with that. But, but it's like, you know, 20, more than 20 ounces, 24 ounces, right? So this is just constantly ingrained to us. And then I was also thinking about the iPhone. I don't know about you, but it seems like you never can have the newest iPhone. No matter how many iPhones you get, they're always coming out with a new one. And by the time that you get your iPhone, maybe learn a few of its features, then they're on to the next one. So I was looking up what the next iPhone, maybe the, the, this is out. I'm not sure if it's the iPhone 12. Maybe, maybe you have an iPhone 12. And I couldn't figure out even by their advertising what they were talking about. It might be called the Bionic. Like, like it says, 
the, the iPhone 12.A14 Pro is better than the Pro Max. I'm not sure if it's called the Bionic or they use this in the description, but they says 5G goes Pro. I mean, do you realize 5G? Wow. I don't have a clue what that is. But it says it's the, it bion, the, the Bionic rockets past every other smartphone chip. Okay, <laughs> rockets past, right? Every smartphone chip. The Pro Camera System, ta- listen, it takes low light photography to the next level with an even bigger jump on the iPhone 12. Bigger is better. The iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the ceramic shield delivers four times better drop performance. Wow, amazing, like drop performance. I drop the mic, I don't know what they're talking about. And then they say, let's see what this thing can do. And I, I'd had enough. But you see what I'm saying? That, that, that the newer, the bigger, the better, this longing for the best thing. If that's you and that's where you're at and, and, and we're listening to social media, we're never going to have a sense of contentment. You will never be satisfied in a culture of consumerism. And they don't want you to be satisfied. But God wants you to know this morning, right now, that you can be content in all circumstances. And here's the secret. Two things. First of all, you must learn contentment. Contentment is learned. And secondly, contentment only comes ultimately in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So the secret has to be learned, the secret of contentment, and it's ultimately found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. And I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Can you imagine your life if you were content regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what's going on right now? Can you imagine like, you know, just tomorrow you learn this secret and you apply it to your life and you just have this deep sense of peace? You would be radically different than so many people who are around you. And it would be attractive, by the way, if you had that contentment, because I think you can feel it and people can see it, but it has to be learned. And here's the hard part. Most of the time, contentment is learned through suffering. It's learned through suffering and subtraction. Now, Paul knew suffering, didn't he? Paul was very familiar with suffering, as was Jesus Christ. But think about, as Paul's writing this from prison, in in these words we've heard, especially in chapter 4, about the joy and the peace in his heart. But he had to learn that. So think about Paul's life, right? I mean, when he met Jesus, he was blinded for days. Paul was beaten multiple times because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Paul was thrown in prison. Paul was shipwrecked. He was stoned almost to the point of death. Because of his faith in Jesus. And so, but he says through those things and through that suffering, he learned what true contentment is all about. And it's interesting to me, he says that I've learned to be content in plenty and in want. Do you know we have to learn to be content in plenty as well? Not not just in suffering, but we have to be content in plenty. And, and, And the reason for that is, one of the reasons I thought of is, that sometimes things are just going so well that you're wondering what's going to go wrong, right? It's like you've got just this joy and, and all things are clicking and life seems to be going wonderful, but you're concerned that something coming up is going to go wrong. And so even in plenty, you're waiting for the next foot to drop and your, your you know, shoe to drop and, and you're nervous, right? even though things are going well. What, what, what a craziness this is. We can't be content in suffering. We can't seem to be content when things are going well because we're waiting for trouble to come along. And God says, that's not what I have in store for you. 
What you need is to learn to trust me and walk with me and walk with Jesus in, in your heart and let him give you strength in all circumstances. Now, I also said that we have to learn through suffering, but we also learn through subtraction. It's actually the opposite of the culture of more. See, the fallacy is if I just have more, if I just get enough, that's when I'll be content. But just get this next thing, you know, whatever it is I need or want, then I'll, I'll be at peace. But we learn through subtraction, not more. And just a quick example. Some of you know that uh, about five years ago, Becky and I moved out of our three-bedroom home and we moved into our garage and we lived in our garage for uh, three years. And we did that so that we could rent out the front house because we wanted to pay off some debt. So for three years, we actually lived in half a garage. We lived in 300 square feet. Now, I know for third world countries, that might even be a mansion. And so we're thankful just to have a roof over our head and to have heat and to have running water. But it was through that, that subtraction and getting rid of, you know, so many things and downsizing and simplifying and living in that condition, which was small for us, that God taught us lessons. He caught, taught us to be content with what you have. And so it was actually in losing things and subtraction that we gained um, this, this great sense of contentness. And so you can be content in every situation. Can I just encourage you this morning that as we are in this pandemic and it seems like, you know, not only are people losing their lives, but they're losing their their ability to go around and enjoy some of the things. Things are being subtracted. Restrictions are being tightened. This is a perfect opportunity for you to learn the lesson of contentment, the secret of content, contentment. Don't miss this opportunity as it feels like we are losing many things and people are losing things, that God has something good that he wants to produce in you through this pain and through this suffering. And so Paul then narrows in on this verse 13. I think he's been building up to this point where he says the secret is that I can do all things through him who gives me strength. I can do, some translations say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He doesn't say that Christ is going to just pull you out of this suffering. What he says is Christ is going to give you strength through this suffering. Tragedy and trouble and suffering is a part of the world that we live in. But Jesus says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be there for you. And I am going to strengthen you. And we have strength from the power of the Holy Spirit that, listen, you can make it through everything. You can make it through if you feel like your heart is discontent, turn to Jesus, trust in Jesus, lean on Jesus, grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ and be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says this. Let's listen to this passage. Hebrews 13 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said never will I leave you never will I forsake you be content with what you have because you have God so rather than focusing on what we don't have to be content we need to realize that if we have God we have everything even if you have nothing and, and like Paul everything is stripped away from you you have everything because God is with you. First Timothy 6, verses 6 and 7 says, But godliness with contentment is great. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Godliness with contentment, it is great gain. I got to giggling a little bit at this because some of the folks at our church, have, I've heard them say that, you know, their mom says, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. 
That's probably good advice and wise to listen to your mom. But ultimately, there's nothing that we can take with us. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. So contentment can't be found in things, and it can't be found in people. It can only be found in Jesus Christ. Contentment is not about what you don't have. It's about what you have in Jesus. Can you imagine this deep sense of contentment in your heart? Can you imagine this overwhelming sense of peace? And, and what, what would tomorrow look like if you just let Christ come in and you fully trusted him to bring you the contentment that you are longing for? It's really hard during this time, and I don't want to minimize the pain and the challenges that we're facing. But Jesus says, let me strengthen you. Let me give you this, the contentment, regardless of the circumstances that you are going through. We're gonna make it through this, we are. And the way that we're gonna make it through this is through the power of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. So this week, can I just encourage you, learn commit, um, contentment through suffering. Learn. Learn. Take, take an opportunity to learn that lesson. Learn contentment this week through subtraction. And know that you can do all things. You can make it through whatever challenges you're facing because Jesus Christ is the one who's going to give you the strength. Now, maybe you feel like that's not a new secret but maybe it needs to be new to you today to learn what this means because it is a journey. It doesn't just happen overnight. It has to be learned. Why not start during this time of great suffering and pain and loss for so many people? Why not take this opportunity to grow in your commitment and in, in your contentment and your relationship with Jesus? Philippians has been amazing. I encourage you, I'm gonna miss it, um, but I encourage you just to really go back to this letter, continue to read it, and soak it in so that it can be practiced in your life. Thanks again for joining us. We'll look forward to next week. What child is this? And Brendan's actually gonna preach next Sunday. I'm looking forward to that as we kind of kick off a couple weeks uh, leading up to the birth of Christ. Let's pray, and then we'll continue with our worship. Please pray with me. Holy Father, thank you so much for what we are learning um, from your word, God. Thank you, Father, because I know that we are all struggling. We are all um, discontent at some level, Father. And what we need is Jesus. We need Jesus to just come into our hearts and come into our minds at this time, Father, and give us that peace that passes understanding and know, God, that there is no difficulty, no challenge, no struggle that he is not going to strengthen us through, Lord. Help us to learn from those struggles, Father, um, and help us to lean on you and to trust you and to be strengthened through your power. Thank you for this, Father, and teach us this this week at a deeper level. Teach us this secret. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks again.